last summer when the market was right around new highs, I did a presentation for stockcharts.com called Before the Bomb Blows Up. And the reason I named it that is usually people wait until the market's down about 30% friends and relatives before the phone starts ringing, before they call me. Dave, what do I do? I'm down 30%, I'm freaking out. Well, I don't know, I'm kind of, it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. If I tell them the market go down another 30% or 40% or more, which it can, then of course that stresses them out. And if the market doesn't turn around soon, or let's say they do get out and the market turns right back around, I'm kind of in a bad position. But my thinking is that they'd go in and watch this video now, now when the market's at new highs, then they might just be okay and they might understand market downturns and how to live and possibly even prosper through them or prosper after they're done at least. Anyway, one of the systems I talked about, I just want to briefly show you here. I know everybody here knows it. It's a, it's a TFM 10% system. And just let me tell you what's going on here. First of all, I'll put the spiders up here. I should have put cash S&P. I didn't realize that my uh, the, the testing was done on the cash S&P, but it works the same with spiders. The buy line here is simply 10% below. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. 10% below the 50-week closing high. I had to turn the AC on. It's blowing right on me. 50... <laughs> 10% below the 50 week closing high. So way back in January of 2020, market closed at a brand new high. It's like coronavirus, ah, we don't need no stinking coronavirus. Thank you, John. Uh, hopefully I just didn't spread some coronavirus. And the market just kind of was plodding along very nicely in here. And then of course, we all know what happened next. So the 10% line, if you took this number here, and you took 90% of it, if you want to look at it that way, or subtract 10% from it, however you want to look at it, that gives you the 10% line. You can see we close below it and below the 50-week moving average. That's all you need for a sell signal. Now, I'm not going to go into painstaking detail on the sell signals and the buy signals, but I just want to kind of give them to you real quick. Uh, by the way, if you're not a member of DaveLander.com, if you sign up for a free membership, you can get a free market timing course where I go into all this stuff in a lot more detail. But anyway, that's the sell signal there. And what shocked me with this, as I said a dozen times, maybe more, is that we got a weekly sell signal before we got even a daily sell signal on the bow ties. And the other thing that's kind of cool, and I was just looking at this right before we went live, is that it wasn't like a sell and you had to rush out and sell right away. So not that I would recommend you sit around and wait, but even if you were trying to think whether or not you should sell, it went a whole nother week before actually beginning to sell off in earnest. And then it really sold off fairly hard. And you'll notice you end up buying the market a little higher. So you might be thinking whipsaw or avoiding one hell of a diaper change. Diaper change is a term I stole from Ian McActavy. Ian used to have the best presentations ever. I wonder if they're recorded somewhere because I'd like to go back and kind of get some pointers from him because he he had the best ever. But anyway, before I digress too far, so you could argue that, hey, we got out here and you got back in here, Dave. That's That's not much market timing. Well, the market did come back. And buying and holding will work until it don't. And I'll show you why it does it in just a second. And as Greg Morris once told me, he came down to visit several years ago. We were living in the old house out in the country. Not that it's relevant. But anyway, we were talking about the markets and stuff. And he said, well, Dave, bear markets are devastating. Whip saws are frustrating. You could survive frustration. So if you're frustrated because you got back in a little bit higher, that's, you know, you're okay. I mean, look what the market is now, even with this little slide we had. Anyway, I, that really stuck with me and made a lot of sense. So the buy, just back this up a little bit. Let's see. The buy 
you need two lows below, I'm sorry, two lows above the 50 week moving average. That's two weeks of land your light and a close above the buy line. So we had that right here. Let me put all this back in. Now, what I found fairly fascinating is as ugly as it seems and has felt, and I know I feel your pain <laughs> lately. When I plotted this chart, I was shocked at how far away we are from that buy line. Anything below the buy line, you have to start thinking about a sell. And now the 50 week moving average is caught up to it. So, for all intents and purposes, anything below the buy line now would be a sell signal. But we still have a long ways to go to get there. Now, the bow ties or trying to bow tie down, this is a daily chart, and that's what I was saying earlier, or certainly certainly alluding to, is we didn't get a bow tie sell signal until after, believe it or not, that weekly signal triggered. And that made me feel pretty good about that weekly signal being, I guess, price-based. It's It caught up to the market really quickly. As soon as the market drops 10%, you need to think about getting out of the way. and. I keep saying I don't want to go into a lot of details on it, but obviously the details there were based on the fact that if a market's going to drop 50% or 80% like the NASDAQ did in 19, in 2000, it's going to have to drop 10% first. So after it drops 10%, you need to think about getting out of the way. Oh, by the way, that buy line in ACP, for those of you who have stock charts ACP, I talked with the programmers and I got an email a week or so ago and they said that they have adjusted it for me because before I said, hey, you know, if you're trading some other market, it might not be 10%, it might be 20% or 30%, it might be a long ways away based on the volatility of the market. But anyway, you can now adjust that parameter. And in the next stock chart show, I'll spend a little time working on that or showing you guys how to do that you know, if you can't figure it out on your own. Anyway, so the moving averages are coming together, and as Greg taught me, and I've said a thousand times, as soon as price crosses below a moving average, and back here, if you squint your eyes, you can see it, an exponential moving average, that is, it'll turn down. A simple moving average might take a little bit longer to catch up. And by accident, I discovered the relationship between the 20 EMA, the 30 EMA, and the 10 simple. And it makes these nice little bow tie patterns like this right here every now and then. Now, this isn't one I'd actually trade. I like them coming off of major, major lows or major, major highs. So this one to the downside, I wouldn't trade it in and of itself, but I might be looking to short some stocks for sure if I get that sell signal. Certainly think about getting out of the way of the market. Now, anyway, so the, so the moving averages will turn down except for the simple, but the simple in this case is caught up fairly quickly to the market. But the moving averages, the exponential ones will turn down as soon as price crosses below them. So if we get back above them, they'll turn back up and they might cross right back to the upside. Down below is just the proper order indicator. Yellow means they're flopping back and forth. Red means they're in downtrend proper order meaning that the 10 is below the 20 and the 20 is below the 30. And then just the opposite for the upside, 10 greater than 20 greater than 30. So we're still in uptrend proper order because the moving averages are working really hard to catch up with price, but they haven't caught up with price just yet. So you can see nice little green here, still in uptrend proper order. But again, the moving averages have turned down. So depending on where we end up over the next few days, this could be a bona fide signal, sell signal, or we could have maybe dodged yet another bullet. So it did get iffy back here, if you guys remember. I'm sure you do. And by the way, back here, I did a lot of speeches on, hey, this is why we don't exit the market. And we're, we're in quite a few of, stock, few of the stocks that we were in back then. We're still in those now. And that's why you don't exit the market when it gets iffy. And, and tonight, for example, I was kind of amazed that material construction is hanging in there. We'll talk about that in one second. And we still have an MNC stock in our portfolio that we've been in forever. If we would have gotten out of it last October, we might be disappointed right now. Now, just real quick, this is the, I grabbed this spreadsheet right before we went live, just so I could show you 
this is what happened after the pandemic. So I keep saying it was 30% drop. It was 28% drop. And that was after the signal. That was 30, 30 something percent, as you saw in the slides, two slides ago, whatever. But peak to trough, it was 28% after the signal. So that's the diaper change. And basically what happens is you get out of the market on a signal, and then I measure how far, how much further the market goes after the signal, peak to trough or from signal to trough. And those are the last two bear markets in there, real bear, well, big bear markets at least. I guess 2020 was a bear market. Yeah, by all measurements. But you can see last two significant bear markets, 2000 or late 99 and 2000 and what, seven or whatever, 44% and 52% respectively. Obviously, Great Depression up here at 83%. And then throughout history, you can see there have been some 20 and 30 and 40% drops fairly often. And fairly often from a statistical standpoint, if the market was normally distributed, in other words, that's a fancy way of saying adheres, if it adhered to statistics, you wouldn't see nearly this many big old moves. And here's the really interesting thing. We haven't triggered the downside yet, just yet, okay? So market's up 42% from that last buy signal. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, you'd be up maybe 44% if you had no market timing at all. But you also would have been able to sleep through a lot of that pandemic slide sitting on a big wad of cash. So obviously a big, huge fan about market timing and i think it's very important that sh that you're not a buy and hold or buy and hope as we often call it somebody was asked me this morning i was talking about some radio famous radio talk show host financial guy i'm not gonna say his name but he used to make me so mad because he would get on airwaves and say you can make 12 percent a year in stocks i was like no you don't danny <laughs> Yeah, you might, but every now and then you'll have a 50% haircut and he probably doesn't understand drawdowns. If you lose 50%, how much do you have to make to get back to break even? I'll save you the math, 100%. 50 day moving average is a well-watched moving average. What I did here was I plotted the, the, the Landry light down here. And again, not to beat the dead horse, but that's just the lows are greater than the moving average. So you can see when it intersects the moving average, it goes back to zero. But what's fascinating about the 50 is you can go all the way back, I think way back to November of 2020. And it never did, you never did have any downside Landry light until of course, back in October, September, October, where the, the highs were less than the moving average. So the market did get a little iffy back then. Okay, it doesn't mean you should rush out and sell your stocks, but definitely keep stops in place. And then since then, we've had a pretty good run. So zero days back here. You had a few days, or more than a few days, okay, of downside Landry Light. That is of some concern. Um, if you were trading something like the 230 EMA system, or in this case, I guess it'd be 250 E, 250 SMA system, then it kind of barely triggered a sell signal. Well, I guess it sort of did. But anyway, the market did recover and went back up. So even if you took a signal like that, a little bit of whipsaw ain't gonna kill you, right? And we've been green ever since. And of course, we just went to zero yesterday and we're still at zero today all right i know i kind of went through it quickly i've gone i've, I've gone through that a thousand times but if you become a free member you can go to daylearner.com slash members and then there's another bigger link i'll put in a post where you can you can also sign up and you can get a free market timing course